And for those still struggling to cope, we're going to dive back briefly in the waning days of the last president, Barack Obama. Among his final major acts in office, the protection of two large marine areas. One's right off the coast of Cape Cod, the other off northwestern Hawaii. The moves made the two areas sanctuaries for many endangered species and vegetation. And just a few days after he took his action, Obama paid a visit to those newly protected waters off the coast of Hawaii. And National Geographic went along for the swim. I'll uh, be leaving the presidency and beginning a new phase. This is a time when you start thinking about what are you leaving behind. If we want to leave behind the same kind of incredible beauty that sustains not only our bodies, but also our souls, then uh, we've got to work for it. Obama went snorkeling in the waters as well, an underwater adventure caught on camera by National Geographic explorer and photographer Brian Scurry's photos appear in the February issue of National Geographic magazine, focused on saving our oceans. And when he's not swimming with presidents, Brian lives in Uxbridge, Massachusetts. He joins me now. Brian, it's great to see you again. Great to be here. I know you were there for work, but you were not there to take a president snorkeling. How did this thing come about? Right. Well, this was the final location in a story that I'd worked on all of 2016, which used the premise of the National Park Service centennial anniversary, which was last year, as an opportunity to look towards the next century of protecting mm. America's oceans. And I went there to photograph this interview that National Geographic had arranged with President Obama on the beaches of Midway, because days before he had just created the world's largest marine protected area there. Started by George W., Started but by expanded George w. to the largest ever. Correct. So how'd you end up doing what well, you're doing? Well, you know, I got there and I was photographing the president stepping off Air Force One there at Midway and uh, felt a hand on my shoulder. It was his personal photographer, Pete Souza, who said, we've got a presidential invitation for you to go snorkeling. I read that when he met you, he said he was a fan of your work. Is he that did. Yeah, How'd no, that feel? He said, well, it was amazing. He said... Uh, Pete said, you know, I'd like to introduce you to Brian Scarry. He goes, I know who he is, Pete. He says, I'm a great admirer of your work, Brian. So that was pretty surreal. And then uh, to be able to go out there in the ocean was, was brilliant. Is this a little intimidating? It was. Um, you know, my mind kept going back and forth between what uh, amazing experience this is and, and don't mess it up. Make sure you get the picture. You know, it, it's pretty obvious based upon these, the thing he's done in the oceans off, as I said, the Cape and off yeah. Hawaii and other places, his deep commitment to this. I don't even know if you had an opportunity to talk about to him. Where did this come from? I mean, most of us, I know Hawaii, Indonesia, see him as the city kid, Chicago. He went to school here, right. obviously. Where does this commitment to the oceans come from? Well, I think it was part of a, a legacy that he wanted to leave behind. Our team at National Geographic had been working with the White House uh, environmental team during the year because this idea had been floated of creating a blue centennial, a blue right, legacy. But where did this, uh, I don't even know if you know, but where did this enter the head of Barack Obama as a kid, as an adult, he that he all said, of a sudden cared about this he stuff? He did say growing up in Hawaii that he fell in love with the ocean and it helps to calm him down. He says when people think that I'm sort of this cool person, it's because of that upbringing in Hawaii, which, you know, relates to the ocean. Okay, and so let's take a look at some of these Obama pictures. I know this question is almost embarrassing. So uh, excuse me in advance. It's a great way to ask a question, isn't it? Yeah. How different is it to photograph the President of the United States than, say, a dolphin? Now, well, I know the dolphins move a lot faster. So a slower-moving fish. Right. What's the difference? Well, it's actually a great question because well, in, many respects, Thank it, you. in many respects, there's not that much of a difference. You know, in fact, I had just done... Uh, a cover story on dolphin intelligence has spent the last two years photographing dolphins, so I used a lot of those same techniques. I was swimming with a camera with no lights, just shooting available light. I wanted to get a little below the surface and sort of get that mirror reflection on the surface. But, you know, your mind is also thinking about what you're doing, and you don't want to invade his space. You know, you've got a Secret Service swimmer behind you, and, and you just want to... How wanna... far behind is the Secret um, he Service? He was actually really great. He, he let me have full access, but, you know, in the beginning, I was a little worried about that. Um, and I didn't want... You know, I could see the president was enjoying the freedom of being out there swimming mm. and uh, curious about what he was seeing as well. well uh, we know how smooth he has been on a basketball court. We've seen those videos. How smooth was he in the war? Unbelievable. I mean, he was a tremendous swimmer. Was he really? And, and I had a hard time keeping up with him. He's I mean, a skinny he was, little guy, though. He, yeah, but I mean, he was buff and fit, and he was he was doing what'd well. What did you two see? I mean, what kind of We saw was lots of fish. We saw some beautiful, uh, pristine corals, sea cucumbers. There was one place where we were standing on the sand and, and put our masks up on our head, and there were three monk seals, you know, in the distance. And I got to tell him about how it's the most endangered species of seal and why. And you know, he, he genuinely had a curiosity about this. And stuff. quickly, Ken, what's the con Consequence of these declarations of these national marine monuments, what's the long-term implication of 
doing that? Well, the long-term implication is that we're helping us to have a better planet. You know, most scientists would say that we need to protect at least 30% of the world's oceans if our planet's going to be healthy. Right now, only about 3% is protected. So we have a long way to go, but these are the right steps, I believe. Do you have any expectation you'll do the same uh, uh, endeavor with uh, the current president? We can only hope. You know, I think it's in everybody's best interest. It's in a national security interest. It helps stem the, the effects of climate change. We, we need more of this. I want to see those pictures. Brian, these right. are great. It's Thank great you. to see you, Brian. Right. Great I to really see you. appreciate your time. Again, you can see his photos in the February issue of National Geographic magazine, which is tied to the documentary Sea of Hope, America's Underwater Treasures on National Geographic.